We'll be looking at uh, some facts about how to be established, how to be stabilized. Often when, when people seem to get, uh, get saved and then they fall away or uh, not fall away from salvation but from the joy of their salvation and they get into other things, it's because they didn't get stabilized. They didn't go on. They got, s got the salvation part, but uh, not the coming to the knowledge of the truth. <coughs> Pardon me. I got a horse throat today, so let me just uh, hope that that's not going to carry through the whole meeting. We'll start in Romans 1, 11, and 12. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end you may be established. There it is. They need to be, we all need to be established. Verse 12, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. In, uh, in those verses there, Paul was writing this in order to establish them, to stabilize them. Uh, he, he, he wanted to be comforted by their, their mutual faith. He had a drive, uh, a commission to go after them. Um, he wanted to be comforted by them coming into a mutual faith would that's what would do it uh, because they didn't yet have a mutual faith with Paul the same kind of faith uh, they, it turns out they did believe the gospel of God about who Jesus is they had come to that knowledge both Peter and Paul were preaching that and so was uh, Apollos eventually they were unaware of what Paul was ready to write to them, though, and that means uh, there was the need for this epistle. That tells them what Paul, uh, th those verses, th uh, that's a preview kind of thing. It tells them what Paul's going to say, what he's going to write to them about, so they're prepared. They don't think he's going to be writing about fishing or something else. They know what's coming up. Let's go to the end of the epistle now and look at how Paul ended it up summarizing what he had told them by the end of the, ep of the epistle. And we'll see that in Romans 16, verse 25 through 27. And we're going to start with 27 because that cures kind of a riddle that I've uh, wondered about for many years. <laughs> Uh, 26, uh, tw excuse me, 25 starts off, now to him that is of power to establish it. But what, what does it mean, now to him? What, <laughs> what is that about? You know, it says, now to him that is of power to establish it. What does the now to him mean? Does it mean now this epistle is to him, is to God? Or does it mean, uh, uh, now I'm turning my focus to him, or what? If we go to verse 27, it gives us a clue, I think. Uh, to God be glory through Jesus Christ. To the only wise God. Excuse me. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. So, to God, he, Paul is giving glory to God. He starts off with this, what, what he ends up finally saying in, in uh, verse 27. He starts off with that in 25 and gets immediately into uh, describing Jesus Christ and his power. Now to him that is of power to establish you. So he never finishes his sentence there in, until later. Now, now to him be glory. But uh, he's closing out the epistle there in those two, two or three verses. And he's praying and he says, now to him is, that is a power to establish you according to. And he goes on to list 
for them the things that will establish them. And they're things to be remembered and, and followed after. The first, my gospel. What does the gospel do? It saves us. Belief in the gospel, in the blood that Christ shed for me, dying for my sins and yours. That's the first establisher. That's the first third, one, one of the first one of the three. And there are things that he had talked about regarding my gospel in, in the earlier chapters of Romans, chapters 1 through 5. Let's review some of those. We'll start with Romans 3.19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may be guilty before God. Verse 20, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Verse 21, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he may might be just might be just present tense in other words and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus where is boasting it is excluded by what law of works <laughs> nay but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Uh, we're going to go over to Romans 4.21 and read some from there. And being fully persuaded that what, he had pro what God had promised, God was able to perform and therefore it was imputed to him, talking about Abram still here, uh, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed if, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Going down to Romans 5, 10 and 11, for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but also we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. So it starts off. Paul starts off the stabilizing or establishing <laughs> principle um, program, uh, the, the way it's done in the Bible, with uh, my gospel. And then comes uh, the first connective word, a, a conjunction, the word and. My gospel and, then the second thing comes up, the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. 
that was the mystery. And it was given to Paul to reveal that mystery to us and to preach Jesus Christ, not according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, not according to Israel's gospel, not according to Jesus Christ's first coming and, uh, and the way he was sent. Uh, when Jesus Christ came the first time, he was sent as a minister of the circumcision. As it says in Romans 15, verse 8, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. They weren't going to be forgotten, in other words. But now, Paul has been sent to preach Jesus Christ according to this secret, this mystery, which was not made known when Jesus was still on earth, it was not made known until after his ascension back to heaven. But it has been made known now, at the beginning of uh, Romans 16, verse tw uh, 26. The first five words say that, uh, not, but, <laughs> but now is made manifest. Let's read that again. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. And then you get the second conjunction, and, the word and, followed by the third thing which establishes those Romans, and us too, by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. That third means of establishing us is the same as what Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. Talking about Timothy, learning the scriptures before Paul was even saved. In 2 Timothy 3, 15, Paul says that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. <coughs> It's through faith, though, and, and the through faith part is what he was teaching. Uh, that's what, the, uh, what, what counts, is what their faith was in, the content of the gospel. Faith is to be faith in Christ that he died for us, for our sins. That's our faith. Our faith is to be in Christ, believing that his Father would raise him from the dead. What do the scriptures say of the prophets that the prophets tell us? Romans 1 verses 1 and 2. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures. So uh, the scriptures of the prophets tell us the facts of the gospel of God, according to those first four verses, uh, well, the first two even, in Romans. The scriptures of the prophets are a means of establishing someone. And from Acts chapter 9 through Acts chapter 19, Paul started with the gospel of God from the scriptures of the prophets when he was introducing Jews and Greeks in the synagogues to the gospel of their salvation. The introduction came in the synagogue, but they didn't, the ones that rejected the gospel of God didn't get to hear the gospel of Christ. So when we sum up all this that we've been talking about here, we see that Romans 16, verses 25 and 26, says that the three things that establish a person that bring you to establishment would be, firstly, the, my gospel. Secondly, the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the, of the mystery. And thirdly, by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations 
for the obedience of faith. By applying the outline in Romans 16, 25 and 26 to, well, we can see that my gospel, we, we read some of the verses before where it started in Romans uh, 1, chapter 1, verse 1, actually, through chapter 5, verse 11. So starting in chapter 5, verse 12, you begin to see the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but is now made manifest. You see Paul teaching about the power of God in us believers and the new creature. You see him talking about how we are dead to sin and freed from sin dead to the law, and that we should reckon ourselves to be so, to be dead to the law, instead of voluntarily falling back into the same pattern of sin. Romans 6, 2, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer in it? Therein. Verse 7. For, uh, Romans 6, 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. And let's interject uh, Galatians 2, 19 here. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. And that living unto God is day by day here before heaven. <laughs> Romans 6.11, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because we are dead to sin, because of that, we are to reckon ourselves to be dead to sin. Since we know it's a fact already in the scriptures, we are dead to sin, so we're to reckon ourselves to be dead to sin. And that's, uh, that's part of the uh, power in our new, new power in our lives since we have applied <laughs> my gospel to ourselves and believe the gospel. He tells us that we believers are not under the law. All these things are... Uh, they're involved with the mystery. They're bound up together. It's, the mystery is uh, 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 it's several things but that were kept secret, but they're powerful. <laughs> uh, I don't think that he uses the term mystery in explaining it in Romans 6, 7, and 8 uh, that we're, we were reading from just a moment ago, but those are chapters that handle the functioning of the new creature. Then we go on to the second conjunction and and, and verse uh, verse 26, Romans 16, 26, we start after the first five words by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God. So where would that be? The prophets had prophesied for Israel and Israel's future. And here Paul is handling those prophecies and why we no longer can be saved by believing Israel's gospel, what was told Israel to, to believe. And what happened to Israel? And we find that all out in Romans chapters 9, 10, and 11. He says that these things establish you. So... What is he doing? Uh, what he well, what he is doing is preparing these people, getting them ready for his, the main part of his letter, and then after those uh, three parts comes the remainder from chapter twelve to sixteen, the remainder of his epistle, and it teaches about what this established or stabilized life is like, and what it produces in others. Uh, the way to live an established, uh, established life as a believer. So we're going to 
close here. Uh, well, we got another lesson, but uh, this is uh, Romans 16, 27. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. You can see in the way God does it, he does it. <laughs> we submit, we yield, we go along with his pattern, but he's the one that supplies the power and uh, makes the changes in us. Uh, the new creature and, and uh, the inner man uh, power that we gain by having the indwelt and sealing Holy Spirit. All right, done with this lesson and we can uh,